In this video, we're going to take a look at things called derivable rules or sequence. And these are rules that we can use in proofs as shortcuts so long as we've proven that they've worked. For example, in the second rules of inference video or the natural deductive logic video, we introduced modus tollens and we proved it. And modus tollens said that if we have a arrow b and if we have not b, then we get not a. Now this wasn't a rule of our initial system, but because we proved it, we can now use it whenever we want. We can say that if we have A or B and we have not B, then we have not A. And I've copied the proof from the other video right here. So this is how it works using our regular rules. We start with A or B and not B as an assumption. We assume A for our proof by contradiction. We copy some things, we get a contradiction out of it, B and not B, therefore we can claim not A. So this is just a shortcut, because basically, whenever we have A arrow B and we have not B, we know there's this little proof we can do to get not A. So we're just skipping that part, because we know how to do it. In this video, we're going to take a look at four more of these rules and prove them, and then we'll do another video where we add even more rules to that. So the first one is called hypothetical syllogism, and basically this is a chain of conditionals. So imagine we have some chain, P, Q, and R, and we said, okay, P goes to Q, Q goes to R. What hypothetical syllogism lets us do is just, it lets us take a shortcut. So instead of going P to Q to R, we can go straight from P to R. And for example, if we were to add, say, another one on our list, S, then we could extend it even further, and we could eventually get from P to S. So hypothetical syllogism can take many arguments depending on how many you have, and it's sort of like a shortcut. So let's prove how this works. Well, first of all, P arrow Q, Q arrow R, therefore P arrow R, this is our proof that we want to do. So on the right, I have our two hypotheses written out, P arrow Q and Q arrow R. Okay, we need to get P arrow R as our conclusion here. So we're going to assume P, that's going to be a hypothesis, and we want to do this for a conditional proof, because that will give us P arrow R at the end of it. Okay, so for four, I'm going to reiterate P arrow Q from line one, so that way we can use modus ponens on it. So from lines three and four, we use modus ponens. Uh, in line six, I'm going to reiterate Q arrow R from our assumptions. So that's line two, it's a reiteration and I'm going to use modus ponens on line five and six. And that is going to give us a proof that if we assume P, we get R, therefore we can conclude that P arrow R. So now whenever we see this pattern in a proof, we can now use hypothetical syllogism to just abbreviate this and make it faster. Now why can we do that? Well, because we know how to do the proof, so we can just basically remove that proof from anything we do. We can just take it as a shortcut. Okay, we've seen both of these before. I want to show you something that's different. Disjunctive syllogism. I'm going to turn my lines on for this so that way everything is orderly. But I'll explain how this works without the lines first. Okay, P or Q. Let's think about the truth table for this. So I'm going to draw this out, but this is essentially our truth table. P or Q is true if either P or Q is true. So imagine, imagine you have a situation where you have P or Q, but you have not P. So you know it's one of these two rows. When is P or Q true in this case? Well, it's only true if Q is true in one of these two cases. So disjunctive syllogism says that if we have P or Q and we have not P, we know which disjunct has to be true, it has to be Q. So this is the little shortcut that we're taking here with this proof. So let me shorten that up on the left so it's not as distracting, and let's do the proof of this. Actually, I'm going to move this over a bit, because why not? Okay, so what are we gonna do here? We need to prove Q, and what I have is I have P or Q. Now when I have P or Q, what I want to do is I want to assume P, I want to assume Q, and I wanna to try to get this or elimination working. So in line three, I am going to assume P, so this is a hypothesis, and we're doing this for or elimination. And in both of our hypotheses for P and Q, 
We're just trying to get Q out of it. Okay, so I don't know how many lines this is going to take. Uh, I'll just make an assumption here. We can extend it if we need to. Okay, I need to get Q somehow. Well, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get Q out of this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume not Q. I'm going to make another assumption for contradiction sake for REA. And hopefully with this, we'll get something out of it. So I believe I'm going to need this many lines for this, which means I'll have to extend this out by two. Okay, so not Q, not Q. This is line four. At this point, we can do some reiteration because we assumed P in step three, so we can reiterate it from three, and we assumed not P in step two, so we can reiterate that from two. Now we have a contradiction. We have not Q, P and not P, so we know our assumption of not Q is false, which means we get not not Q. So from four to six, that's a proof by RAA. Uh, then in line eight, we can use double negation on line seven to get Q. So this is kind of a kind of kind of a cheap thing. But because we have not P and P, we know we're going to get a contradiction. So we can assume anything we want and we can just negate it. So if we assume Q, we would get the same thing and we get not Q as a result. Uh, we're just picking the one that we need. So it's kind of a it's kind of a tricky thing to do. But it works. Okay. So we have P arrow Q, which is good. So we if we assume P we get Q. Now we have to do one where we assume Q. Uh, in fact, I want to space this out a little bit. So Q, that's going to be our new assumption, and that's going to be for OR elimination. Okay, well, the nice thing about this one is that if we assume Q and we're trying to get Q out of it, this is really easy because we just have to reiterate it from the previous step. Okay, so I have to extend this a little bit. Uh, our result now is going to be in line 12 that because if we assume P, we get Q. Because if we assume Q, we get Q. That means that we can write down Q because no matter which of P or which of Q are true, we get Q in the end. So this is a proof by OR elimination. So our OR starts in one. We did a proof from P from lines three to eight, and we did a proof from Q in lines nine to 10, and that was OR elimination. So that was the proof of disjunctive syllogism. So now any time you see P or Q and not P, or P or Q and not Q, you know what you're going to get. And this, these are just the steps we would leave out. But we know that we can do this proof anytime we need it, so we don't need to include that part anymore. This is a very powerful tool, and this can save you a lot of lines, because imagine every single time you see this, you have to write out 3 through 10. No, it'll save you eight lines every single time you see this pattern. Now, the last two we're going to do are De Morgan's, and it's just going to be one of the two different types of De Morgan's laws. I'll have another video where we do the other two. But this one says if we have not P or Q, we get not P and not Q. So in English, you can say something is like neither. I don't know. Neither green nor blue. So this is like saying not G or B. We can paraphrase this. So we could paraphrase this. This has the exact same meaning, not green and not blue. So we would write this as not G and not B. So these two are logically equivalent by translation and by truth conditions. And that's what we're trying to show here. So in this slide, we're doing uh, not G or B to not G and not B, and on the next slide, we're going to do it in the reverse direction. So we can substitute these with each other at any time. So let me get rid of the purple. I'm going to keep this on the left side just so that way you can reference it if you're interested. Okay, let's turn the lines on and see what we can do. Now, this proof is a little unintuitive, I think, at first, but Maybe for you, it's a little bit more straightforward on how this works. Okay. So we need to get not P and not Q. So I'm thinking that we're going to assume P for RAA, we're going to assume Q for RAA, and we're going to end up negating both and putting those together. So we'll need two subproofs here. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just assume P, 
as a hypothesis under the pretense that we're going to negate this. We're going to find a contradiction. We're going to negate this. So I am going to need, I think, just this. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So when you get stuck, you take a look at your hypothesis and you see I have not P or Q. I cannot really do anything with this. But I have to train my mind. I have to think, okay, I need a contradiction. And I see a not P or Q here. So if I could get P or Q in my subproof, then I could get P or Q and not P or Q, and I could get a contradiction there. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And with the rule of or introduction, I know P is true. So because P is true, P or Q must be true. So from line two, this is or introduction. And now what I can do is I can just reiterate not P or Q from line one, and now I have a contradiction. I have P or Q, and I have not P or Q, which means I'm going to get not P as a result. So from 2 to 4, I have done RAA. I've done a proof by contradiction. Okay, so I have not P. This is 1. I'm going to put a star to the left of it because I need not P eventually for uh, to make not P and not Q. Now I need to get Q out of it. Okay, so I'll assume Q for the same reason. It's a hypothesis. And the intention is to find a contradiction and negate it. So this is actually the exact same thing as what we just did. Oh, we have Q. So we can introduce P or Q by OR introduction. So on line 6, that's OR introduction. Uh, we can reiterate not P or Q from line 1. That's our initial hypothesis. And because of that, we can get not Q. So from lines 6 to 8, that's a proof by RAA. OK, so we can put a star by this too. We now have not P and not Q. Which means in line 11, sorry, line 10, what am I doing? I'm skipping one. Uh, we can take not P and we can take not Q from lines 5 and line 9, and we can use and introduction to join them together. And there you go. There is the proof that if we have not P or Q, then we have not P and not Q. So we've proven one direction for De Morgan's law. Let's prove the other direction. Let's prove that if we have not P and not Q, then we get not P or Q. And we actually need a new rule to do this. It's a rule that is available in all of the systems. It is RAA, but it's introducing a contradiction symbol. Uh, the reason we do this is because if we have, say, uh, P or Q, and we have a proof of P and a proof of Q, if we want to get a contradiction for P or Q, we have to essentially find a contradiction from P and a contradiction from Q. So in order to make our rule work with or elimination, we have to introduce this contradiction introduction rule. So uh, this, is, this is intuitive if you've been following the rest of the series. I don't mean to say that like harshly as in you, you should understand this for sure, but it follows from what we talked about earlier. We have P, we have not P. This is just the symbol for a contradiction. So we find a contradiction. Okay, let's try this proof. If you cannot do this proof on your own, I totally understand. Uh, this was actually one I did prepare for because the first time I looked at it, it took me about 10 minutes to figure it out. And this is from someone who does these on maybe not a regular basis, uh, but on a basis that I should be able to look at this and immediately know it. So uh, let's take a look at this. Okay. We're trying to get not P or Q as a result. Okay. This is what we're trying to get. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume P or Q as a hypothesis. And this is for the sake of contradiction. We're going to make a contradiction at some point. So I don't know how long this is going to be. I completely forget how many steps this is, but I'm going to introduce a long thing. So we have P or Q, which means we're doing two subproofs here. We're going to do a subproof where we assume P, and we're going to do a subproof where we assume Q. We're going to find a contradiction in both, and that's going to give us uh, P or Q to a contradiction, which will let us negate everything. So let's start our hypotheses for OR elimination. Okay. Well, this is convenient. Uh, what am I going to need? I'm going to need I think, three things here. Okay. 
So in line four, I need to reiterate one so I can bring this into the proof. And I probably could have split this up outside of the subproof, but I mean, we're already here, so why not? This is a reiteration from one. I need to get not p out of this. So I'm going to use and elimination on four to get not p. Now I have a contradiction. But if I was doing this for RAA, I would just get not p as a result because I'd be negating p. But using this new rule on the left, contradiction introduction, I have p, I have not p. Therefore, I am going to get a contradiction in line six. And this is from three, this is from five, and this is called contradiction introduction. So I know that if I have p, I get a contradiction. So half of this or elimination is done. Uh, in line seven, I'm now going to assume q for or elimination. And this is going to look very similar to the proof we just did. So here's another hypothesis for or elimination. I'm going to bring not p and not q into it and get not q out of it. So reiterating from one and doing and elimination on line eight. Okay, now we have a contradiction. We have q and not q. So on line 10, we get a contradiction. So this is from seven. This is from nine, and this is contradiction introduction. Okay, so now we have P arrow contradiction, we have Q arrow the contradiction. So whether we assume P or we assume Q, we get a contradiction. Therefore, in line 11, we can get ourselves a contradiction. So this started in two, uh, we had a proof from three to six, and we had a proof from seven to 10, and that was or elimination. Okay, at this point, we have P or Q, we get a contradiction. So therefore our assumption P or Q cannot be correct. In line 12, we know we have to have not P or Q, and that was approved by RAA. So from two to 11, this is RAA, and therefore we have concluded our proof. So as you can see, we do need that rule in the system for it to work. We do need contradiction introduction, and we can use the fact that we have a contradiction from two to 11 to get the negation of two there, which would be not P or Q in the end. So those are all the things that we're doing in this video. Now, whenever you see any of these in your proofs, you can use them. If you're taking a course in person, the order that you learn these things might be different, but this is generally the procedure that you're told, is that once you've proven the rules, you can use them, or maybe you might call it a different system. Uh, there are some books where if you call the system PL, then the ones with these rules might be PL plus or something like that. So just be aware of it if you're taking this in person. But anyways, if you have any questions, as always, you can ask in the comments below, and I'll get to you when I can.